Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Natalie in Renaissance podcast. And so today I want to talk about comparison. I'm sort of swinging back into the realm of performance and how we invest our energy and something that plays a big role, wanted or unwanted, is this idea of comparison. And as an artist, as a business owner, and especially with the rise of technology, you have to be seen, right? And so people don't know that you can help them unless they know about you. And in order to have a successful business, one that is healthy and progressing, people need to know that you exist. And so with that truth nowadays is that there are a lot of people, artists, business owners, we're all in these spaces together, online, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever have you, but we're all in our own lanes. And I definitely, at least the spaces I inhabit, I definitely see a lot of respect there. And I think we're all recognizing that we can have a abundance mindset in that there is room for all of us. There is room for respect. No one is going to steal your clients. You know, there's enough for all of us to go around. And with that acceptance of a growth mindset and also an abundance mindset, I don't have to be terrified about my business. I have more trust in God and that I am going to be taken care of because I'm working on what I should be doing and I'm doing the best that I know how at this current moment. But back to the idea of that we are all in these spaces together, we're showing up and we're being seen, that is a form of performance. And obviously there's a lot of nuances here, uh, but for those who want to share, we're all in these spaces and inhabiting them together. And so as a result of this unwanted or wanted, the idea of comparison, the phenomenon of comparison can happen almost unintentionally, where it is very easy for us to compare two things side by side and just to notice the similarities or the differences. I think that's how a lot of us are just trained in general or as we're looking and identifying even in a schooling program, you know, what are the similarities? What are the differences? Because that is a skill to be able to do so. But the thing and the danger here about comparison, at least in when it comes to people, is that, as I've said before, we all have our own unique qualities, our own unique gifts, our own way of speaking and doing things. And we're all at different places in our journey and that is how it should be. And so to look at someone who's, let's say a year or two into their business or online and comparing them with someone who is a veteran and has just a lot of rapport and has practice being seen for such a long time and has reaped the benefits of that, just keeping that in mind and also just realizing that there are some experiences uh, that people have and just noticing that I think is super important before you compare yourself to someone else whose life you really don't know. The internet is really a poor reflection of reality. But just keeping that in mind that we're all in different places. Some of us are intersecting with others. We're running parallel with others, but really we're on our own journey. And that's just what makes up the beautiful quilt of life is just exactly that, that we're all working together and we're all doing it in a way that is good for us, but also good for others as well. So there's no need to be in competition. And I want to say that comparison does not need to mean competition. And how do we do that? There are some times when, you know, something pops up on an Instagram feed or there's an announcement or something like that. And sometimes it could be someone announcing something exciting that you have always wanted to do but really never voiced and seeing them get to experience that moment, you feel something. And I'm not going to talk about what that feeling could be quite yet, but you just feel the certain emotion, right? And so you could interpret that feeling to be jealousy. And you just had that moment of comparison where it's this other person. It could be a colleague. It could be a friend. It could be someone on the internet who you don't know, but you just immediately go into comparison without even thinking about it. 
and then you experience an emotion. And as I've said before, our emotions very rarely do they reflect the reality of our situation and the truth of our existence. But you feel something and immediately if you aren't trained or even aware of this, you can immediately interpret that emotion to be jealousy or envy. And it's like, well, since they got it, there's no room for me or how come they get to do this? And you just immediately descend into this downward spiral, just putting yourself down of being jealous of the other person. And that's not a good place to be, but I think it's how a lot of people associate comparison to be with that exact feeling. And you know what I'm talking about because all of us have experienced this in some way. And it makes you feel bad about yourself. It makes you feel bad about where you are in life. And the person sharing that really, I promise, did not mean to do that to you at all. They're just shining their light and just kind of giving everyone an update. I mean, if you had something exciting to share, wouldn't you be excited to share with others? But anyways, so you're just very unhappy and it puts you in a certain kind of way and you just have this energy and you're not really sure what to do. And we would associate all of those downward spirals of thought, this low energy, negative energy with the idea of comparison. But I would say that energy, that idea, it has been linked to that by you. And so what we have to do is revisit this idea of that emotion that we first encountered when we experienced, you know, seeing the good news, seeing whatever that celebratory moment was, whatever it is. And we need to go back to that moment and let's reflect here. Maybe that wasn't jealousy. Maybe that wasn't, I am less than. Maybe it wasn't, well, since this person got this, there's no room for me. Let's reframe this and let's look at it from a different light. You actually admire this person. You appreciate them. You respect them. And they're inspiring you. And you are actually inspired in this moment. And I know it's kind of crazy to think this way, but when you want something and when you're working towards something, it's because you are invested, you care, and you have a strong desire to go after that. And someone who is leading the way, they are your inspiration. And the only reason that you are feeling these things so strongly, because I think we would all agree that these feelings of jealousy, of envy, of these thought loops, they are so contagious and you feel them so strongly, which is why comparison has such a negative word. But actually, let's flip it. Let's flip the, the narrative. Let's flip the script. You are actually inspired by that person. And in reinterpreting that gut feeling that we get, and moving from a place of, wow, I didn't get this, I must not be as good as her, just saying, wow, this person really inspires me. And the fact that this person can do that means I can do this too. And moving into that place, you have to have an elevated consciousness to be able to do that, right? Just to detach from your emotion and then to be very careful in how you process that. Because like I said, the negative thought loops of jealousy, of envy, they're very powerful. But if we flip it and just realize that jealousy is underdeveloped inspiration. And just in thinking about that differently, I can think of a couple of moments in my life where as I'm in this space, something great happens for another person or someone achieves something that is on, you know, something I would like to achieve also. And I remember sort of dealing with that idea of comparison but I've gotten much better and also doing the inner work and saying wow that's awesome for this person I know that they work so hard I know that they put this experience into it congratulations because now as I've grown my growth mindset my abundance mindset I know that we all have a piece of the pie and we're all in our own lanes and I have faith that what is for me is for me and no one else can take that. I can't take something that belongs to another person, right? There is enough for all of us. And so using these once triggers for negative 
energy in the way I process, I'm actually flipping them to be inspiration to me, to be mentors for me, and to have a productive and healthy outlook because at some point, each one of us will succeed and also each one of us will fail. And that just comes with life, learning and growing as a person and continuing in our own unique journeys. And so comparison is not a competition and there is no reason for anyone to feel less than by another person. We all are our own unique people with our own unique gift sets. We have our own ideas of success, our own ideas of happiness. And so the journey shouldn't be the same. And so, like I said, just taking a step back and resting in that brings me a lot of peace and it helps me to live a happier life because I don't need to look at anyone else. And if I am, they are an inspiration to me and I'm going to support them because I know the golden rule. I'm going to treat others how I want to be treated And in celebrating their success, that means that they will also celebrate my success. So if this concept is new for you and you say, you know what, I am one of those people that I really dislike other people succeeding because it makes me feel a certain way or I get triggered by these things, you can help yourself out. And here's what you can do. Get busy. People who are working on their own thing, something that they love, They don't feel the need to look at other people because they're so happy, they're so passionate about their own little thing. And it could be reviewing books on Instagram, becoming a Bookstagram reader. It could be perfecting your own recipes. Whatever it is, it could be so small or it could be so big, but get busy. Sometimes our mind, when we aren't active in facing challenges or productive things, our mind creates problems for us just because it's left unattended. It's almost like a puppy who needs training and you know it's not getting walked or it's not getting run right. It's just a different kind of mischievous energy. And I think the mind works the same way where it needs to be used productively and we all have beautiful minds and I think they need to be put to use. So get busy, find something, a new hobby. If you have time to look at other people and sit back and dwell in these negative thought loops, you have time to build something of your own. And that would be my challenge to you. You need something of your own to be proud of, and you deserve that. You deserve to have something of your own that you are incredibly proud of because there's no other feeling like that. And that is my deepest wish for you to experience what that feels like. So get busy doing something small, big, whatever it is, get busy. Because you will find in doing the work, you will gain so much more appreciation for the people who do these things and make them look easy because it is anything but easy. And the things that really look seamless and automatic, that has come with a lot of practice, a lot of effort, a lot of trial and error that you aren't seeing on the flip side. So let's say you do have your own thing, but you have been working, overworking, you're in your head, and you're not seeing the results that you feel like you deserve with all the amount of work you put in, the energy. I would say that maybe you need to take a step back, gain some perspectives, and get in touch with your whys again. Because in my experience, you could be getting in your own way by being over-invested and you're not giving yourself space Um, and you might be working in misalignment and you're creating misalignment in yourself or your business and so things aren't working as they're supposed to because they're not in complete alignment. And so I would say if you feel like that is the cause of your discontent, take a step back and get back in alignment. Get back in alignment with your whys and work from that inspired place because I think if you have this, I'm doing everything I can and it's not working, you're in this desperate energy that's really not healthy for you to be in. So get back in alignment and connect with that inspired, why you even started in the first place, the things that are important to you. And by being in alignment, things will sort themselves out. And that is my utmost belief as a business owner, as an artist, and as a human. And also just keeping in mind that life is seasonal and I feel especially in business, I'm really glad that I operate on a semester schedule because it definitely gives me a sense of starting, of finishing, and 
as we're working, you know, in a garden, we have this deconstruction, right? You have to rototill, you have to clean out the space um, to plant something new. So that's the first season, deconstructing. Then we have planting, planting the seeds. And then we have this maintenance and upkeep and just a lot of work in between planting. And then the last season is harvest, right? And so I think in our era of performance of being seen, there's so many people who share the good things, right? And not all are sharing the bad things, of course. Um, But just know that we are all bound by this seasonal aspect of life and of work. And you could be in a place where you actually need to deconstruct. And why are you wanting a harvest when you're in a totally different season, right? That doesn't make sense as a gardener um, because it's just a completely different season. And so being in alignment with recognizing, okay, this is what I've been working on. I feel like this is the season I'm in and being true to that season, it means that it will lead you into the next season. And I think sometimes deconstructing can be a hard season to be in because you feel like you're restarting, you're resetting. Actually, that's a really great place to be where you're in trial and error. You say, okay, this doesn't work. It hasn't worked for me. Let's try something new. And by revising, editing your process, no matter what your work is, by being in this place, it actually brings an environment that can create something that is even more beautiful, more new. And so just keeping these seasons in mind helps us to build our own pile of good things. We all have our own little corners, our own lanes, and maximizing what we ourselves bring to the table, it means that we give permission to someone else to do the same. And if we can have this idea of comparison as inspiration, as actually community where each one of us while being different, we are all trying to work to a better humanity. We are all trying to bring beauty to the world. We're all trying to find happiness, to find health. That's a healthy environment for collaboration, for growth, for learning. And that is such an important part of life is mastering this mindset because there's always going to be quote unquote someone doing something more incredible than you, someone doing it younger than you, someone doing it, you know, more flashier than you. And really, what does that matter? It's wonderful that these things are being done at all. And we all have these opportunities to do something. We all have our times to shine. We each have our own ups and downs, mountains and valleys, and that's a guarantee. And so in building a healthy mindset where when we see someone accomplishing something, we say, wow, congratulations, you're such an inspiration. And we use that to lead ourselves down a productive path of inspiration, of teach me how you did it, of using it in a productive way for ourselves. It creates an environment of respect, of collaboration, and of just supportive queen energy where people who are successful, they're not afraid to shine. I think right now people are worried about negative feedback because people are lashing out. People are lashing out at them because of their success, because of their light, and that is not, that's not it. The more we celebrate someone else's light, the more our light will also be celebrated. And the more we encourage others to shine their light, the more we will be encouraged. And so to recap, comparison is not a competition. It's actually inspirational community. And if you don't feel like you have an inspirational community, find one. I'm so thankful that the group of associates, colleagues, and acquaintances that I have now, there's nothing but supportive queen energy. And I say supportive queen energy because it's like a band of female entrepreneurs. And I just love being with them. I love being in their circle and I love celebrating their wins. I truly, truly love celebrating with them. I love being inspired by them and they encourage me to show up, to dream bigger, to be louder, to just be me and there's nothing like that. So if you find yourself struggling with comparison, get busy, find something, fall in love with it and do more with it and grow it and nurture it and have something that you're proud of. And also 
respect and value the community that you've been placed in, the people who are also working very hard. They are really sacrificing. They're being faithful. They're being consistent to their dreams. And I want to respect people like that because it's so difficult and it is difficult to shine your light in especially like times like these. And so I support those people. I send them my love and I never ever want to take away or make them feel badly for everything that they have done. And I want to let them know that they're an inspiration to me to keep dreaming, to keep working, and to keep learning. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast today. Like and follow on Instagram if you aren't already at Natalie in Renaissance. Please, if you feel like this episode resonated with you, please leave a written review and it would be much appreciated. We'll see you next week.